Hello? Hello? People hear me? I can hear you all good. Very good. So we're just waiting on Ben and Dan. Uh, everyone, while, while we're waiting, the Roller Sign channel is open, so you can go and pick up the Messenger Roll if you don't have it down in the back office. Just head on out, ask Phyllis to hook you up with the Messenger Roll, and she'll, she'll give you a hand. Lovely, lovely lady. Phyllis? <laughs> lovely, lovely lady. Is she your best friend to Betty? <laughs> Uh, oh, we just need to bring Dan on stage. Oh, Dan. Where's Dan? He would have a blowfish. Put your hand up, Dan. There he is. Oh, wrong person. <laughs> There's Dan. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm guessing Ben should be able to be in here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, need to bring Ben. Ben, can you please request to be on stage? Where are you? Ben, 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 Admiral Ben. Admiral Ben. There he is. Fantastic. The gang's all here. Fantastic. All right, you are muted, Ben, just in case you're unaware. There we go. There we go. Can you hear us, Ben? Yep, I can hear you. Fantastic. Hey. You have a lot of background noise, Ben. <clears throat> All right. Shall we get started? I think Ben's just going to mute with his background noise. Welcome, everyone. All 189 uh, pilots. 188. Dang. Uh, to the Phantom Galaxy's Town Hall. We're lucky enough to be joined by uh, Chantel, uh, my <laughs> other lovely community manager. Hello. And we also have Dan, Hello. our lovely QA manager, just as lovely, and the loveliest Admiral Ben, which people are probably pretty aware of who he is. Um, he is the Overlord. Uh, so well, first things first, uh, if if you weren't here beforehand, I did mention that the messenger roll is currently available in the roll assign uh, channel in our back office. So if you don't have that, go and pick it up now because we will be closing it uh, when the town, town hall is ending. Uh, so don't miss out on that because we're pretty pretty strict with time frames. Uh, second thing we want to tick off, which uh, everyone seemed to love, was the PG memes. Uh, Supreme Overlord. Chantel, did you want to do the honors? Yes, I'd love to. It was a, it was a uh, pretty tight competition. There were actually quite a few really funny memes. Um, but Mr. Daedalus took out the uh, number one spot as Meme Overlord, unsurprisingly. Um, yes. <laughs> but we are also, I think we all agreed that we're going to leave the channel there anyway, because it's too good to close. Um, so even though the competition's over, you guys can still post your memes in there. We're going to leave up some lovely memes for everyone to uh, just appreciate. Uh, so I think I think we're ready to get started. Um, Dan, Ben, is there anything you wanted to say before we, we dive into the questions? Uh, is that Ben or Dan? Sorry, let me just... Both, <laughs> Ben and Dan. <laughs> give, Dan a, give Dan a chance to yeah, intro. Yeah, Dan, and... uh, we've, we've heard from Ben plenty. Um, why, don't, why don't you tell us what you do uh, for the Phantom Galaxies uh, game, basically? Yeah, so I am a QA manager, so uh, me and my team, it's our job to make sure we find all the bugs and crush all the bugs so that you can all have an enjoyable time. <laughs> um, 
we've listened to your feedback and all the bugs you raised from episode one. Um, uh, good job. Thanks for that. We've put some of that in. Uh, you'll be happy to know that the immortal Captain Olsen has been put to bed. <laughs> no! <laughs> um, y- you guys are all just too good at shooting at him with missiles. He was meant to dodge them, so <laughs> good job with that. Um, so, yes, yeah, so... That, that's our role, and I've spent hundreds of hours in this game, so any um, tips or hints or things like that you want to know, um, that will be my specialty. Right. I'm sure I'm sure we'll get some some hints and tips from you from you later, Dan. Uh... Yeah, so I assume you mean like all right, the vesting schedule for, for a mission. So, yeah, what is happening there with the planets is that, you know, you've seen there's like a minimum and a maximum emission amount. And essentially all those all those tokens vest over or emitted over three years. Um, and that's for that, that's from the date of, of minting the planet. So it's kind of following that kind of sandbox model. So we're doing a, a first... Um, batch of planets for the private sale and public sale coming up and then ongoing we'll be doing more sales over the next three years as well so essentially the all the tokens that are kind of um, allocated to the planet will be will be emitted over the next six years in total but um yeah there's no yeah so it starts from starts from kind of month one so there's no there's no normal clip like that but um but yeah so you have to, to hold the planet and and yeah, keep engaged with it Cool, cool. Uh, Mathrax, any plans to stop bots during hopeful sale, capture, etc.? Uh, during the hopeful sale, n- no. I mean, it's on. Um, you need to have the the ticket, and once you go in there, and it'll be through our website, um, and you'll have to uh, essentially, you know, exchange the ticket. So you know, the ticket will be burnt. Um, that's after you choose which planet you kind of want. So. Um, yeah, we we'll see see how it goes. There's only two and a half thousand of them, so I mean, I don't know how if someone's gone and bought them up. Look, we're not, you know, I guess what we planned is the the hopeful has um, lots of, you know, it's got multiple utilities. So the, I don't think we haven't seen, I guess, like a bot just buying them all up to try to do that. So I don't think it, it shouldn't be an issue anyway for the hopeful sale. And similar for the for the yeah. You know, the halberd one because you know there's a raffle first to give out the ticket bees then you know, there's no one that's guaranteed right now to be able to get one of those so again it's um yeah but for the public sale it might be more of an issue but uh you know when it goes full public but yeah that's how it goes there until then yeah until then uh from shredhead <laughs> from shredhead uh can you please explain the utility of the pg token yeah, so um, that's all in our light paper currently, if you have a look at that. But even PG token is a governance token, so it's used in multiple different ways. You know, obviously governance, so with the organizations in the game, they will they will rely on people having the PG token and essentially, uh, you know, staking that to your own organization to, to get your voting power within your own organization. Um, and then, you know, in the future, way in the far future, also with, with Phantom Galaxies as a whole. but it's really cool that we don't have this kind of I haven't seen a system in a game yet in a blockchain game right it is a governance token so you'll be your own guilds and organizations you'll be able to use it for your own governance of your own guilds and that's where we're presenting you see in the light paper we've had a few different designs on how those organizations can be run uh, so you know, ultimately the organization admin i guess you'd say until until that first choice is made on on how the organization is set up but then you know if you go to a dow then essentially you're going to lose control and whoever's you know kind of going into your into your organization then has you know the voting rights based on based on their governance token so it's going to be very interesting you know i think we're going to see a lot of emerging you know emergent gameplay um and governance from the system something that hasn't been done before so it's going to be very very interesting 
other things are with the Starfighter fusion system, you, you, you're going to need the PG token to every time you want to you know, level up your Starfighter and fuse that. Um, so that's you know, is there. In combat, when you get further out into the, you know, the frontier lands and PV, PvP, um, we have these things which are kind of, you know, they're going to be like rogue planets, which essentially people or organizations, depending on how big you are or how strong you are, are fighting over these rogue planets. And you essentially take control over them through through combat, through PvP, but then to continue your control and to earn the emissions from those planets, you're going to need to um, stake the PG token to that planet as well. So it's kind of um, that's like a kind of regular staking system, but gamified. You know, you, you so stake, cool. You, yeah, you stake your token and you're going to win that back. Um, also, with with buildings and and you know, whether that's on the on the on the, on the land or in space. You know, it's your kind of your energy your energy system too and that's why it's part of the fusion system so um, you'll need some you'll need some governance to, to keep your keep your buildings running and yeah and nice but they're, they're the main thing so yeah a very loaded question yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> so evil Bob so he seems stressed about the planet sale what chance will ticket B people have of actually obtaining a planet or asteroid? Uh, I mean, you're guaranteed to get at least a, you know, get in there with a, with an asteroid. Like they're all planets, so you know, it's just a naming convention we put in there. Uh, the asteroids, arguably, yeah. well, I haven't actually shared it here. I could share it later on. We've got some, you know, w work in progress uh, of the of the NFT. The, and the asteroids look look cool, actually. So, so you know, um, there's no there's no functional difference between them. It's just a naming convention. So I. I Please don't discriminate against asteroids. Don't it's discriminate cool. against asteroids. Yeah. You yeah. got it here. Was that a meme? I think that it was is a meme definitely a meme. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that's, they're, they're, yeah, they're as important as planets. So you can't see me on the video now, but I'm like doing the inverted commas of planets. <laughs> so, um, planets. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we've kind of answered that one, Mathrax, earlier. Uh, will the PG token drop be available for US citizens? Will KYC be required? The PG token. So I'm not sure what the PG token drop is. Is it for for buying for buying planets? Mm. Then it will be KYC. So we are, you know, we're we're committed to. You know, we are, yeah, you know, part of Animaca Group. We are doing everything in a fully legitimate and regulated way, preparing for whatever regulations come through. We want to be. Yeah, you know, we're going to be the best, biggest blockchain game in the world, which means we need to be in America, in the US, which means we have to meet whatever regulations are there. So, um, you yeah. know, we're doing whatever we can. We're we're talking with some really cool partners to be able to KYC KYC US citizens who can actually get in there and be part of the the, the planet sales. Um, so, so, yes, yes to both. Cool. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Uh, Shredhead, again, when will a tokenomics white paper be released? Uh, very, like, soon. soon. <laughs> the old soon. The Hit him with the soon. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, we, we, the game's not, you know, early access beta in Q3. Um, we're always, you know, we're doing our best to overcome the challenges that are in the blockchain crypto gaming space. And to do that, we need to be always kind of watching what other projects are kind of you know doing and what they're trying to resolve things and just be a bit a bit um flexible in how that works uh but you know our goal is to again be the number one game which you know axie infinity was the number one game for, for quite a while um because you know kind of early and first and and it had that you know it had the right ingredients to to get to that point but now something else is needed to 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 get past the, the issues and challenges that have sprung up there and yeah, tons of projects are doing that. We are our one of our big, you know, one of our messages we always say is like we're game first. So, yep. um, as everyone you know, people played episode one of seeing, you, know, you, you everyone here is you know, you're playing it and it's fun, right? And and many people are playing it just for that fun factor. So, that is you know, it's a key pillar for us. And then how we integrate that and then in with the tokenomics and and get everything that's going to be a, a robust system for the for the economics moving forward. Yeah, it's it's a big it's a big challenge and something that, that you know, we are spending our time and and, and thinking about it uh, as much as we can. Yeah. 
Um, another big question. Uh, so, do bag doll, we'll move on. Can you start, can you discuss PG token unlock rates? Will this be linear or exponential, etc.? The, so the, the it, it's linear, but um, it, it, and then it's based on how, how much you, you, your engagement you achieve and you'll see in the dashboard. Um, the game's gonna have like a dashboard that has finance organizations and, and memberships and, and all that kind of integrated in one place. Uh, and you'll be able to see see how you're doing that. So the monthly, monthly you know, we're targeting monthly payouts um, based on that. Cool. Very much linear. Uh, Shredhead, will Phantom Galaxies provide tools for guilds to automatically distribute PG token and other awards to guild members at set time increments? That is our that is our current target. Yes, it's our aim. So it's what we're aiming for. Um, I know cool. that every every day, every week, we see that there's there's new there's new tools that are kind of third party tools that are coming out, and you know, like <laughs> guilds are actually building it into their whole guild system. So, you know, uh, at the moment, that's what we're aiming for because there's no clear kind of leader in that space, and um, and but you know, a lot of the larger guilds are asking us to integrate with their systems, and you know, we've got a great relationship with them, so. Uh, we're still this kind of in, in talks and seeing how it'll play out. Yeah. Uh, Overgird, will there be a mode for raids or dungeons with guild members? Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was, I think that was in the light paper, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zoya? Will the poster NFTs have utility besides the snapshot for Starfighters or avatars? I mean, that's the that's the utility is pretty big. Um, we'll always, you know, do some fun things further along down the line. You know, this game is going to be around for many years, and so I'm sure we'll come up with some fun stuff that you know people right now are, are collecting them and getting them for for what is you know, I think to get one of these special generative. Starfires and avatars is the value there is way above anyway what it's going to cost people to get it right now. So I think just look at it that way. It's just something really cool to get now, and then whatever comes later is just you know just kind of a bonus on top. So um, again, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean the, the plan that we've laid out that is the plan. So I'd look at it. That's what you're doing. If you decide to then you know get your avatar and then sell the poster before whatever we announce next for it, that's fine. Like I mean that's everyone's choice, but. You know, we're not going to lock ourselves into saying what is going to is going to be used for after because, uh, yeah, it's just it's just for fun right now. Same thing with planets. We, you know, we we're valuing it on what we've announced, and you know, people are you, know, you should be very happy to either buy or not buy based on that, and then whatever happens later is just different. Yep. Yep. Uh, Shredhead. Is there a plan to increase the number of planets over time? If so, how will this be done? Uh, so we've we've like there's a there's a token allocation, a planet allocation that that will not change. That will not, you know, that that's fixed. Um, but yeah, so the sales of the planets, you know, similar to like the sandbox model, we're just going to be selling them regularly. So there'll be more there'll be more coming into into you know, circulation over time, definitely. And that's um, yeah. But the actual tokenomics oh, so around it expand over time. Yeah, yeah, with economics and distribution, that, that's fixed, yeah. Cool. Um, all right, are the planets and asteroids attackable at all times? Is there a constant risk of your resources being destroyed slash stolen? No, no, I mean, they're, they're, you know, they're, you're buying them, you're owning them, and, and that's part of it. So um, there'll be other things that come into play for the, the frontier space, so the planets and asteroids are, uh, you know, your own ship there might be some i guess as we get further out as the, as the roadmap of the game comes out with more with pvp then there might be some you know uh, things that are engaged around engagement and how that works um, but it's not like you're going to you know, get your planet destroyed or stolen cool um oxv rabbits uh, will we be able to choose our generative starfighter class when minting, or will they be random? Random. That's part of the generative aspect of things. 
I mean, yeah, you don't get to see anything, right? You're, yeah, you're going to get your airdrop, you're going to get your, your mint pass, or your mint sample, and then, and then, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be cool. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited to see so what Dad says. You get what you're given. Yeah, <laughs> I'll turn this car around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's, I, there's, like four, yeah. there's 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 rarity of features in there. Yes, so that's that's part of it. I mean, that's what generative is. So very cool. That's cool. That's yeah. what makes it fun. Yeah, that's I mean, what makes it yeah, spicy. even. Even the even, you know, our private investors and people take, taking part in the planets, so the planets themselves will have some. You know, the, the tokenomics around the PG token is fixed, but there's going to be generative aspect from in the planets as well, which is going to be. Like, I think that, that's fun. People are kind of excited by that too. It's like, oh, you know, again, what we what we sell and pitch is based on this defined value, but whatever we can layer on top of that is is separate. So. You know, we're, we're looking at what can we make in the generative aspect of the planets and asteroids that is, again, it's going to just be like, oh, you know, that, that little bit of rarity and anything in there. Yo, absolutely. <laughs> um, very good. So where are we at? Uh, Beanie McBeard face. That's a name I've seen a lot. Who decides on percentages when it comes to leasing starfighters? Uh, is it the game, the guild, individual players? Yeah, so so because we're offering, you know, our goal is to put the, that mercenary system in there, so the individual players can actually lease out their starfighters. Um, it's the owner of the starfighter, whether that's a guild or an individual player, that will be able to set that up. Um, but then also, you know, you know the game Phantom Galaxies, we have that, we have that. Um, yeah, we'll we'll have a small uh, percentage you know, share of that as well. So with any kind of transaction. Nice. Uh, will guilds be able to organize the location of planets and asteroids pre-launch? So the way you do that is if you, you can need to be trading it on a market. So, so no, you can't organize it. You're there, like I said, there. It's randomized in how it comes out. But then mm -hmm. after that, you can you can swap with people. You can do all sorts of things. Go to CNT. So um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun to see too. And we've got some really you know nice. cool partners that we're going to be announcing over time. That are you know that are you know, engaging in getting some large planets like really cool and that very dirt that, yeah like the sandbox model is is cool. is great for that and they've shown how that kind of works for that whole metaverse thing and you no know, we've got we've got some really cool partners on whether that's like um, they could be more like real life real world partners or that can't you know we're, we're going to theme and find out how we can integrate it well into the Phantom Galaxies or they're going to be partners that just really make sense for Panic Galaxies, which is what I'm really cool. You know, I love I love transmitting robots and that sort of stuff. So we're trying to you know we're, we're in talks to try to get some really cool partnerships there, which will be exciting. Awesome. Uh, Shredhead again. Uh, how many people does each planet type support? Yeah, so we've had this question pop up a few times. It's not it's not really a question of how many people does each planet Type support, right? It's like you can have people visit, and you know, you're going to have it defined by how how big your planet is, how big your buildings are. Um, you know, we're building out uh, you know, how how many people you have in one spot with based on the, the network infrastructure as well. So that's all being that's all being put into place. But it's like, um, yeah, it doesn't affect anything the, you know, the planet, uh, in, in a way. Your each planet will have. Yeah, we'll announce more about the land and how that works later. Um, and I guess maybe that's what the that question is related to. So um, I mentioned, you know, I mentioned in the paper, you know, the core asteroid is like four people and then it's being scaled up from there. Um, and you know, yeah. it's roughly going to be on, based on the value and, and the multiple of, of the planets you know, cost on, on that. So it won't be exact, but it'll be roughly that way. Yeah, yeah. All right. Venren, does having a hopeful slash ticket A grant the holder the ability to buy one of the reserved asteroids planets from that initial pool even past the pre-sale? Uh, no. So the whole the whole pool for pre-sale and public is the same pool. So if you don't use it in the pre-sale, then like you've got it, you can, but it, you yeah most likely won't give you any any value there. Um, so. But you know we are revising. Like people said, you know, one hour's not enough. So we'll we'll make sure that we kind of um, expand it out. Like we're looking at 
try to do 24 hours. Don't, you can't quote me on that. Again, we just in, in talks about how to do it. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so we've got another one from Venren. What other blockchains are planned for to be the first options for the multi-chain gameplay in the coming years? Basically, what <laughs> vision is there on prospective capable chains that will be able to support this? So, is that... I mean, yeah, I mean, we're talking, we're talking to different people. I mean, it's more about the, the design of the server that we're doing now to make sure that it can handle different different blockchains. And all, from all the discussions we've had so far, that's, yeah, no, I mean, it's looking good. Most likely, it'll be a ERC-20 compatible chain it would be the second one, um, just for, with regards to bridging of the token, the PG token. Um, you know what I mean? But that, that's just my thoughts now. If there's tons, again, there's tons of things that are you know, solutions or other third party products that are coming out that are trying to resolve that aspect too. So, um, you know, if that if that becomes not a blocker, then, then that, that opens up uh, whatever blockchain it might be number two as well. So, um, so yeah. Yep. Vernren, again, this guy is loving it. Will precautions be taken to prevent high gas fees for minting in specific time spans, for example, in the planet asteroid sale phase. I um, mean, everything's on. Like we're on Polygon now, so it's not. Yeah, I don't think gas is going to be an issue. Um, no. I, I think as people have found and, and how they're going, well, you, you don't want to just keep bridging ETH over to Polygon when you need it. <laughs> That's when you're going to pay the most gas fees, right? Because you, <laughs> you've got to pay ETH gas fees whenever you, you send something over. So I think you know, what. If you don't want to do that, then bridge a chunk of ETH over Polygon and 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 have your 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 Polygon your wallet there for what that is. Um, the planet sales probably we probably asked yeah. later or been asked. They are, they're going to be in USDC USDT initially. So. Yep. Cool. From Daedalus, our meme overlord. Meme overlord himself. Can we have more details? <laughs> Can we have more details? on organizations in PG and how they will function? Uh, they're, no, it's, very, it's too broad <laughs> question, sorry. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're guilds, I mean, what, I don't know, like you can do tons of stuff, like you'll have members, you can have different governance structures, you will be working together, you'll be, you know, you'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to, you know, make your own kind of, well, uniforms or decide on, you know, Side your own uniforms. You might want to go out there and try to find the best loot. That it's like you know, similar to WoW, right? Like you go on, like I said, guild raids, and if you're all trying to get the same top or whatever for your avatar or your same same weapon for your starfighter, then you'll just need to keep keep kind of doing that to, to build it up. And you know, if you've got four, one person in your guild, great, you, you get it once and you've got it. You've got like a hundred people, then you might need to keep raiding for a bit and make sure everyone gets it. That's that's the cool thing I think. Yeah. We'll be cool to see people making that, doing that kind of thing. Um, and then once we get to you know the PVP stage, it'll be it'll be lots of you know really cool stuff going on there. Can't wait. Uh, Panda, will owning planets asteroids come with a monthly maintenance fee? Uh, since it's basically using server resources and can't be uh, indefinitely hosted without covering cost. Uh, so the main structures and, and buildings, you know, will uh, will have some. It's like maintenance fees. Like it's it's it's, it's an in-game economy, right? So, any kind of NMO you've got when you're, you're building things up, there's, there's going to be a little bit of yeah, upkeep on on the larger thing. Um, like I said, the Starfires themselves have that have that durability, so you'll want to keep keep that going um, based on yeah how how you're faring. If you if you're a lead Starfighter pilot and don't die, then you know you'll be you'll be fine. You could. Lovely. Um, okay, we've kind of answered those. Will owning a planet bring actual profit, not just a possibility to get even by selling PG tokens? I mean, yeah, I can. Like, the planet I guess like a passive up. income. Yeah. No. I mean, it's not. Yeah, you don't. There's no such. Yeah, I mean, this is a game, right? So you you are in the game and you you're earning whatever that you can through the gameplay. There's going to be the the land 
based aspect of it as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is a blockchain, blockchain game. So, again, you know, I'm not giving any financial advice or anything because you know, we're about the game, but that's the utility, <laughs> the utility of the planet is, is we're being you know, very upfront about. And yeah, I think that's, yep. that's And he says, do I get it right that selling these tokens will basically mean selling off your ruling rights to the planet? Yeah, well, I mean, it's governance token. It's not just the planet. It's like, like we were saying earlier, I think, you know, the question was, what's the utility of the governance token? It's, it's got many different utilities in the game. Um, so people that want to to play the game, progress through the game and get better and you know, have, the, have that extra capability to keep um, finding better loot, you know, winning the, the PvP battles, you know, entering into tournaments, um, that... Again, that's that's the core thing that is, I guess, it's hurting E2E games, and that's why we've always said we're a playing and a play and earn game. You know, this is from like six months ago. See, a lot, lot of projects using that term now, so maybe I don't know, maybe it started a trend or something. You know, coined so, it. <laughs> but um, you know, it, 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 this is not a play to earn game. Oh, you know, we we're upfront about that. It's about playing and earn, um, and how and how how that plays out. Some people will be able to play to earn but you know, our goal is to provide you know a world-class game that people love playing and um, just building out that economy and you know, again if you're in there and playing you're just going to keep getting better and better star fighters better better loot and they're all about keys and you can trade them on on the on market um, so yeah and we're always going to have you know we're again we're trying to run a good economy in the game with tokens it's a multi-token economy so yeah Big, big challenge, big task, but we are dedicated towards building that. Yeah, you'll have to change your name to Economist Ben. Economist. Uh, son. <laughs> Economist Overlord. Son ben. of Thanos. One of our mods. It states that solo players can buy space stations. I assume they would be on a planet. Uh, are we able to buy space stations for our planet and rent them out to solo players for a fee? Uh, more, more details on that to come. <laughs> okay. Good. I like those answers. <laughs> um, so summer shine. We've already been through that. Um, we've already. Uh, we haven't quite covered this. Uh, are our planets and asteroids safe from attack from other players, or do we can we build defenses to prevent this? Yeah. So right now, they're this yeah, this they're safe from other players for the planets that you're buying. But yeah, as we get to towards the frontier space, when you can, you, know, you can, you there's going to be things that to do out there, so that'll be different. Yep, yep. Uh, this kind of follows up Daedalus again. Uh, are the planets located in the frontier space, or are they in the safe zone? They're, they're, yeah, they're not in frontier space. We will have some planets there though. So, um, and how that, how that mm. goes. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean. Well, more to come later on that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've hit a few of those in a row. Um, keeping up to earn, uh, Son of Thanos again. Are we able to select certain pilots to give them access to come to our planets and deny access to others? Uh, good question. You probably uh, block people. So we're likely to make the block people, but um, yeah, I think that's that would be that would fall into that that basket. Answer that. Because <laughs> I want to, I want to block Luke immediately. <laughs> He's not coming near my asteroid. Hey. Capra <laughs> <laughs> uh, Row. When is the town hall starting? We're doing it right now. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> will the rented starfighters be insured? Are avatars customizable in some way? I believe that's two questions. So, uh, will the rented starfighters be insured? Uh, yeah, that's up to the owner of the starfighter. Oh, okay. Very good. Uh, and are avatars customizable in some way? Yes. In well. Yes, customizable in some way. Great. 
Yeah. Minting of them, no. They're generative avatars. But then after and what you take into the yeah. game and how you, you, know, you do there, like, yeah. So. More like, cool. yeah. Yeah. You're not going to. Cool. Oh, you know that, how I said that. Maybe we could add. You could. We could add a spatial reconstruction facility at some point. Like, like nice. A free facelift uh, for everyone. Uh, big, big, <laughs> big boy says, "How will the PG tokens avoid being consumed by the infinite wall of cell pressure that eventually consumes all P2E projects?" Yeah, I mean, we said there's another P2E project, so we're designing around that, so that's an easy answer. Not easy to answer that question, obviously a challenge to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 all right, SLL. This is fully loaded. This one's got four questions in one sentence. Uh, can I outsource my planet's development to guilds? No, you definitely can, but you'll have to come to some financial agreement with those guilds. I mean, it's entirely up to you, right? They're, they're NFTs, the guilds are people. <laughs> you can go talk to them and figure something out. <laughs> um, no, but that's uh, which factors up. will I... Yeah. Oh. I'm oh, sorry, continue. No, I was saying that that is something that's come up and that's, that's the answer. So, you know, we're, there's tons of guilds out yeah. there. Um, which factors will have the most significance, significant effect on the token emission rate? Staking token number, properties number. Um, do you have a contribution breakdown for the planet's token emission rate? Not right now, but you'll get, you'll get more info on that later. Yep, more info later. Good. Um, uh, it's selling price, you public sale. Um, if I sell my token generated from Planet, will the ownership change? Yes. If you, sorry, if you sell Good. your what? Your token? Yeah. Can't. If you sell your Planet, yeah, yes, it's, it's based on the holder of the Planet. Okay. So. Hmm. Um, you don't know it any more than, you know, it's blockchain. It's gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> being looked at for them. Um, what can we have called number two ratios? Uh, Follow-up question. Uh, is there some system in place that tokens will remain among players only and won't devalue through some whales holding the majority of the market? Uh, I mean, I don't really know what that question is saying, but if you have, yeah, this whole thing about whales, it is other people that have more money than you, I guess. So, if they decide you know, it's a free market, um, so they can do do what they please, and we want to, you know, we want to, as you said, we're building a game and an economy that caters to everybody. So it's not, it shouldn't be about us versus them, which is mm -hmm. one of the main things that we're trying to do. We're trying to, we're trying to build something. And again, difficult, <laughs> but we're trying to build something where it's a, uh, we're all playing together. Yeah, and we're not playing against each other. So. Uh, I get I get all these questions, uh, you know, from based on other previous projects. Um, but you know what what we're doing here is not a, it's not an us versus them. So you should be welcoming people that have more money can come in and, and buy things. And you know they, they they might buy something, then they a planet, and they might run an event. They might bring a partner in that's like you know someone you really love and you know really want to you know chat to. And then they come in and you just gain from that. You know you're not you're not losing from that. Yeah, it's a really nice perspective. I actually uh, went through and compiled a few questions um, for Dan, if we wanted to cover off on some of those. Yeah, cover it. Sure, um, let's go. So, from Rodin, Dan, what will the next episode of the game be like? Um, so, it builds on a lot more from what we've experienced in episode one. Um, same sort of duration, same sort of lots of space fights. Um, we've got a couple of tough boss, boss fights in this time. And um, a special type of mission that, um, my favorite type of mission that you can Ooh. explore um, in, the, in the early stages of the game. It's one of the first missions you can unlock and it's completely different and very fun. Awesome, that's super good cool. to hear. I think like one of, of the- Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry, you continue, Dan. 
<laughs> right, just look, there, there's a couple of uh, hacking missions as well, several hacking missions. Ooh. Very good, get my hacking skills on. I think one of the biggest things that I saw uh, a lot of the community shouting out for was the um, the trophies and the postcards, was it? Do you find the rest of the of the trophies in this episode? No, the trophy, the last statue um, is in, statue. I believe it's episode three. Oh no, everybody's going to have to wait. <laughs> going to have to hang around. But you are introduced into another type of item in this in this episode as well. Very good, very good. Uh, from Wednesday, will future episodes be released on Mac and PC simultaneously? That is the intention. Very good. <laughs> nice and sweet and simple. Uh, from Orion Sincote, will the game support HOTUS hands on truss and sticks joysticks? That, uh, Ben, if you want to chime in on that, um, that's something we're looking at. But uh, there are so many peripherals. It's, I yeah. bet. That's a good question. I, yeah, I personally never thought about that. So, um, had to put it down. Something <laughs> looking into. <laughs> good. And the last question I had is a bit of a long one, so forgive me if I mess it up. It's from Khan. I've heard that once you've completed episode four, your level, etc., won't tra be transferred to the main net. What are the differences between those who joined on the test net and those who joined from the main net? Basically, just you've encountered a sort of introduction tutorial of the game. You'll have a bit more information on the story and mechanics of the game. Um, otherwise, when we get to the full MMO, it's um, fresh state. Everyone's on the same level you've just got that bit of background experience and a bit more enjoyment of what phantom galaxies is very good um is there any like kind of major hints or like major tips that you had based on kind of how episode one went um is there anything that you think uh, people should really follow up on in episode two maybe um a, a few things that we've changed based on the feedback is that um you can now dash or dodge by double tapping um, I know the Alt A and Alt D was a bit cumbersome, so now double tapping. Um, so hopefully a lot of you are happy on that. Uh, one thing that was in episode one that some people might not have been aware of is if you press Alt, your ship will level itself out automatically. Um, if you're a bit turned upside down from the dogfight, that will help you level out and keep blasting away at everyone. Um, otherwise, yeah. some of the boss battles can be tough. Um, play, play around with your distance. If you're too close, you might get punished. If you're too far, you might not do any damage. So play around yeah. with the environment and the weapons. There's a whole bunch of weapons and the mechs. Find your favorite, try a few different combinations, and you can be surprised at what a difference it makes. Yeah. Did we, uh, do we have any plans to add VR support by any chance? No, no, no plans at the moment. Very good. I think that is everything from me to you, Dan. Uh, Luke, if you wanted to take back over. <laughs> sure, sure. I've uh, I've been scouring for some for some nice ones for Ben to tackle. Um, one of our mods, Octopus Prime, has a has a kind of an MMO related question, which is really nice. Will PG be as grind intensive as a typical MMORPG? So resource farming, killing mobs, etc. Uh, in my opinion, players nowadays aren't like before during the heyday of classic MMOs. Uh, plus, I think the extensive grinding mechanism will may discourage or shoo away many players. That, that's gonna be a. I think one day we'll have to get in our next channel. We need to get our our lead game designer in. Uh, Liam, so you can have you know, answer some really cool game, game design questions. Um, but look, we, you know, right cool. now we're taking into account a lot of a lot of different you know, designs. It is it is an MMO. You do need to level up. We need to have the content there for people. Uh, yeah, again, the question is how extreme is that grinding? You know, we, no, our, our people we, we play modern day games, right? We don't we don't no. Some people might play 
you live online still. <laughs> Some people still like, wow, but, but you know, we're, we're kind of gameplay of what's coming out too. So we're seeing the trends, we're staying on top of, you know, what's happening now. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's that answer there. Where, you know, we'll have a, a much more detailed release on the, with the white paper, you know, based on the, you know, the game design. So I think that's, you know, that's when you'll start to see, see more of that information come out. Cool. Uh, another good one from Venren. Uh, what economic models um, were used as inspiration slash basis for the in-game economy? Uh, I mean, look, there's um, the way we, the way we're working it, which is pretty cool, is that myself and, and Mark, um, he's an economics advisor, where we're looking at it. From that tokenomics point of view, and on, on what we can do, and how we can achieve what we think will be that that balance and economy that we're going for, and then we you know, we, we speak with, with Liam, our game designer, and and you know for me and me and Mark going, oh, you know, can we do this? It's, it's going to be tough, right? And then Liam, from you know, from his you know, years and years of you know game experience, game design experience, he's been able to look at it and go, oh well, no, no, I, I, like I know this game, you know, we, uh, th these problems have been solved by games before. Um, Sure, there's going to be a slightly different tweak, but that's that's the way that it works. That's how game design works. So, no, I think um, you know, it is a really cool direction that we're heading, and we are quite aligned in what we're trying to achieve and, and how we're trying to achieve it. And you know, it's part of just getting the balance right, building in the details, and again, that's why you know we are launching into you know, early access beta, right? It's not it's not the full launch. Um, and so we will need to you know, get that out, get that into the hands of people, uh, hopefully, you know, tens of thousands of you and start playing around and hundreds of thousands. You know, we've got quite a lot of people. Like the marketing promotion side is going to be ramping up substantially over the next, you know, over the next month. So um, what that means for how many people we're having in there for launch, um, whether we might have to restrict it or not, we don't know, but, um, but you know, we're, we're, we're wanted, we want to do this right and in a way that we're always transparent and very upfront with with our community, with everyone here and our player base about what we're trying to do and what might be, you know, what might be tweakable. Um, yeah, to, to get there, but always trying to, you know, focus on also not not disturbing any of the value we've created previously or what we've said before. So, you know, we're, we're very mindful of, of all of those things. Yeah, we've we've kind of preached transparency from the start. Yeah, and yeah, um, happy, happy cool boy. Yeah, you know, happy people to jump out and and call us up on something. Yeah, uh, it's going to be subjective. You, know, you you call us out on something that you believe in, and and then we either go, oh, okay, that's something. You know, that all right, thanks for that. Well, you know, we, we we might not have thought about it, and sometimes we might have said, oh, we thought about that, and we've decided to do something else. You know, it's not that's yeah, that's you know, kind of collaborative. Um, yeah, happy to openly admit to things. Mm. Um, Pool Boy has a good classic question. Uh, are there any roadblocks that you see to the progress of Phantom Galaxies? What are your biggest challenges at the moment? Uh, uh, roadblocks? No. I mean, not. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> not ideally. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, people, we've got the game in, in, in your hands. We're. You know, this is only you know again we're only testing the, the core gameplay here uh, a lot of elements elements of it will change for for the full for the full game um, but you know blockers could be you know again I said we're trying to involve you know do proper KYC on US citizens you know we don't we don't know what regulations will change and so that could be that could be a potential blockers there that's always that risk in the in the crypto space um, but we don't foresee anything, so that, that's all looking fine. Like, there's no blockers that, that we can see right now. Uh, there is certainly a lot of challenges. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in every aspect of this game, whether it comes down to um, how we're running on chain. You know, I mean, you've seen that you know, things have happened over the past few months when it comes to different chains. Um, you know, with, you know, with getting getting drowned out and, and things happening, you know, you know, getting um, congested and things like that. You know. Uh, how look development takes long time so 
we've given our roadmap. Um, we've done very well at hitting the things that we're saying. You know, sometimes it might be a week or two late, but pretty much we've we've gotten things out when we said we would. And you know, especially you know, people saying, "Oh, is it the end of this month?" Well, we still have essentially nearly a week left in this month, so uh, we actually we actually have things ready to to go. And so you know. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up now. And compensation page, we did want to get it out this morning before the town hall. Uh, it's ready to go, but we just have one issue that we was set up of the of the KYC element that we're looking to resolve over the next day or two. So hopefully that that compensation page will go live tomorrow or the day after. That's what our plans are. Episode two, as Dan said, look, episode two is you know it's it's actually done and past QA, but we're still just getting everything ready. Um, for you know, a bit of promotion around it and getting that release ready for for next week so you know our where yeah i don't think there's going to be anything that gets in the way between us hitting our, our goals have you said those will be alive the um the conversion and the claim on the badges that might get pushed back a week um, into march or two it depends we're, we're actually in we're in testing now so it's already it's actually all uh, it's past audit, so we've actually completed the the audit on that. Um, and that's you know, that's all good. Now it's just yeah, we're still we're still just checking it from a from a behavioural point of view and through the through the website and make sure that's all good. But you know, very soon people will be able to get out there and you know take their five halberds and get the next episode two post it. And they'll be able to and they'll be able to claim badge one <laughs> and badge two. So that's that's exciting. I don't think we've even haven't even released the the visuals of that yet. Um, Hint episode nope. two will show you a hint of the episode two poster in a tea. So, so yeah, but um, <laughs> that's, so that's so that's really cool. You know, what I mean, yeah, we've said that, and yes, look, look, the boards, I imagine some things will probably will have a high chance of being delayed, um, longer than what we've managed to do right now, but right now, no, like where the generative avatars and starfighters, they're like the team is working on those and getting those sweets so um, I think people are going to be excited by that you know they're, they're not coming out until after episode four so that's uh, not it's a while to go yet but it's you know really cool I mean, wh where else have you now got these kind of generative avatars and star fires where you get the and you get mid pass get your and get your NFT PSP but then straight away you've got it in game looking looking amazing from you know, time you can see what we've done so very good. That was a lot of information there, so I hope everyone was <laughs> still listening to that. I hope everyone's got their notes ready. Um, yeah, that was, that was a lot. Yeah, this uh, is being recorded, right? So we're going to all... Yeah, it, it is. certainly is. So we can, we can splice it up for some, some, some hot little ear nuggets. <laughs> all right. Uh, ben, I know you're a busy guy. Um, did you want to do maybe one more question? Um, have, have you seen anything that that you specifically would like to answer, or we'll finish up the town hall? Oh, well, yeah. Is there is there anyone who wants to jump on and have a say something or have a house question or? Yeah, let's do let's do a house question. Yeah. Who uh, who wants to pop up? If, if you're interested, uh, pop the hand up. Uh, Nathrax, we've we've already answered a lot of your questions. <laughs> um, what about Chief Rex? Are we okay with yeah. Chief Rex? I haven't seen him answer put any questions. Let's grab Chief Rex up. Yeah, if he says the wrong thing, just kick him off. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, Chief Rex. I've invited you to speak. Come on up. Feel like a, like a talk show host. Yeah, right. <laughs> Our next guest, welcome to the stage. Chief Rex, you have been invited. If you're bailing on us, we'll be ever upset. Uh, <laughs> I guess he doesn't want to get involved. Chief Rex? <laughs> well, this Choose is all good now. Ten, 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 yeah. ten second countdown, people. No, Sorry, Chief. Idea. Sorry, Chief. Sorry, Chief. You have been booted. Uh, another name that I haven't seen. Here we go. Yusufaki. Yusufaki. 
think that's how you say it. You have been also invited. Hey! Yeah, here he is. Hey, how are you? Hey, uh, just a how quick you doing? Hey. Good, good, just a quick one. Uh, I was just wondering, what are your um, plans in terms of marketing for the project in the future? Nice. Yeah, no, I'm no, also no, interested. Good question. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, actually, <laughs> part of the marketing team, so yeah. Oh, he's gone. Thank <laughs> you, no, no, like Thanks for that. No, no, thanks for coming up there. No, so we're, <laughs> like, we're, we're, yeah, we're in, a lot of plans are, uh, are in place now to start, um, you know, working with influencers, working with partners, and doing some announcements. You know, we want to get to the point where we have more of the, you know, the game and the roadmap in place. Um, and so, you know, it'll start ramping up slowly. Um, but as we get released more and more, you know, we don't we don't want to overhype it before we actually get to the point yeah. where we the people that we're reaching can can come in and get involved more. So um, you know, we're having that kind of you know that tailored approach. But uh, yeah, I mean this 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 planet sale is you know big first step in 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 that kind of marketing and promotion side. So yeah. Very good. Nice. Uh, do you mind if you we... <laughs> do you mind if we do one more, Ben? Yeah, no, go for it. Uh... I've got Peerless here, and he seems to have a picture of one of our mechs as his profile icon. Hey, Peerless. hey, how's it going, guys? Good. good how are man. you? Good, out. man. I this this project has been. I don't know. It's it's crazy what you guys have planned. I uh, I've been in here. I think there was like a thousand people in here when I joined the Discord. Um, wow. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm you know I'm, I've been in the you know NFT crypto space a while and part of some communities and I've shilled the shit out of this project. But um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I I do have a couple questions though. Um, so, I mean, I've been a gamer for like 30 years, fucking love games, World of Warcraft, you know, probably lost a job or two and uh, failed out of some <laughs> classes, but that's all good. <laughs> so, I, um, with that being said, how are you guys planning on balancing, like, the play to earn or play and earn and the pay to win aspect of the game and when i say that i mean in the sense that like you know i really i i've, I've always hated play to win games and i've i've stayed away from them like the plague simply because you know you're like a player and you're trying to play the best and then someone just comes in with the huge stack and you know you know, peace out you know what i'm saying so uh, how do you balance that aspect and then not reducing the impact of like the gear, which would also reduce its value? Yeah, I mean, so you, you asked a uh, good question. You asked a couple of questions there also with, with the play to earn aspect, how we're, how we're balancing it. Um, so firstly, the the game loops and the economy loops that we're designing are um, essentially a, a, a specific type of player should be able to play the game um, in a way that, that you know they're, they're after, and that the, the, they're getting that from the game, and then from them playing that the game how they would like, they're actually still creating activity and engagement and even content, you know, when it, when it comes to the co-op or PvP aspect of the game. So everybody is there, is in there trying to play to their own way. Um, but then they're also just creating that world, you know, the Phantom Galaxy's world universe for each other. And then hopefully, you know, the hope is that people will be engaged, you know, and you're kind of going to communicate and, and talk. And there might be, again, we talk about this emergent um, gameplay. And I think for blockchain gaming, this is quite quite a big thing. Um, and it, it's tough. And this kind of leads into your, your other question about, you know, pay, pay to win. And that as soon as you add, you know, financial incentivization into something, then a lot of people, you know, you are going to get your, your subset of people to try and min-max, min-max things out. Um, and to be honest, so, you know, what we're, what we're trying to do is, that we obviously, min-maxing is going to be possible, but it's not going to be, you know, one, it won't be the most uh, engaging way to play the game, and it's not going to be the most rewarding way to play the game. So... We really want to. Yeah, but rewarding is different to everybody, right? So, I mean, and and this is a theory. So, yeah, 
that that is kind of the playing off between the different kind of um, groups of, of players and because of that when people are coming in and it's you know I'm like you said I might be a, a way on the come in and I I buy you know the, the absolute best starfighter that somebody has built up and, and sold and and then um, you know but then I'm also you know, doing that with the avatar as well I mean look in a normal game none of the community benefits from that in a in a blockchain game with true digital ownership you, you remember that somebody's actually making you know it's not the game that's that's benefiting from that it's somebody else that's spent the time and built up what they what someone has bought so so look that's that's kind of closing that loop between between the whale and the, and the and the play to earner and the other game player you know if you're just playing for fun you're still going to build up a, a nice stash of or starfighters and, and, and digital assets that yeah you know, so you're getting something out of there um, and then on the on the other way you know they're not going to have the skills so you can still achieve what what they've achieved and you can still be better than what the other player is um, you know it, when when everything is a digital asset and it's purchasable you have even less I guess restrictions on someone being able to come in and buy things and that's something that we have to embrace and then and then build the game systems around to you know we want those players to have fun too you know it's not again it's not about us us versus them i think but in the past it was like people or the rest of the community couldn't benefit from the whale coming in they just ruin the gameplay but in this case we have that benefit we have that loop where people they're coming in and they're buying from you right so you you might not want to sell but then you might i guess yeah yeah shift over to that so I don't know if that really answers the, your, your question and exactly how you want it, but that's that's the way that we're looking into it and thinking about it. Um, but anyway, always, first and foremost, it's about you know, gameplay and, and having that enjoyment there and making the best game possible. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, I think that uh, that, that soaks up our time. Um, did you have any closing, closing thoughts, Ben or, or Dan? Uh, for myself, no. I mean, it's, been, it's always great talking to everybody. Um, you know, uh, things are getting really you know, a lot busier over here, so um, I still jump on every now and then in the Discord when I can and have little little mini AMAs with people. But we'll have you know we're looking to have a lot more of these official you know, town halls. You know, doing some more you know, Twitch streams. We, you know, we want to get some more different development people in, whether it's game design, art, programming. Uh, just, sharing more of the development process um and, and how we're going so that'll be that'll be fun Absolutely. yeah so yeah we'd just like to thank everyone for joining obviously thank ben and and dan for their their time they're very busy individuals both uh you know trying to get this game out to everyone um thank you everyone for the questions we're sorry if we if we missed people which we did there were a lot um and yeah, thank you actually. for uh, Yusufaki and Peerless for being uh, quite polite, which was nice. Um, just before we close, don't forget that there is the messenger role. We'll probably close that in, what, roughly half an hour? Yeah. Um, and, and that's our time. So this is also recorded, so we will probably pop this up um, on, on one of our socials, if not all. Uh, and just thank you to everyone for joining. Thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a lovely day.